Welcome to Whole Truth, uh, the podcast by me, Jordan Stevens. Um, and I'm joined by, and that was quite a stack, it was quite like a, it was a jagged beginning. It, yeah, it's it was normal. edgy. Oh, in a good way. Yeah, so the voice you can hear, this is, uh, I'm joined by Beth McColl, um, author and yeah. writer of words. Writer of, doer of words, maker of... Doer of words. Doer of, why do words? <laughs> so money. one thing I think we had to point out from the start, which we can establish quite quickly, is that uh, both of us maybe have ADHD. Yeah. Which we've, from the 10 to 15 minutes before this started, we we realised that we were kind of setting each other off. Yeah, so. this might go. I, do, I think it's true. I think it's true. It happens to me a lot. I also have a tic disorder. I have Tourette's as well, which is do why you? I can't medicate it. And is that I, why you do the the right eye? Yeah, twitch? the right eye twitch, and that's I, me. I like love and and when I in public, I've been on the bus with someone else who has it, and we were just setting each other off in a way that was just. Oh my it God. was quite funny, it's but I was like, we it? have to be separated. Do you think it goes for that goes for a lot of like mental health? I think so. Nearly everyone with these like neurodevelopmental things. I think people really. I can see people yeah. with like particular forms of anxiety joining. Oh yeah, but do they make it worse though? Yeah, I do. Yeah, That's but so wild. we'll see how it goes. So like, what? How extreme does your Tourette's get? Are they, is it as, as? Is it like the the um the one? What would the word be? Is it like? The I are people's idea of what Tourette's is. I, know no, it comes I mean, in not really. Forms, so there's, there's, you know, when people think of it as like, I'm yeah. going to say the worst thing ever to so you. So that's like there's copra lalia, which is the uncontrolled swearing, and I think that's one in ten sufferers. So it's really rare to have that. Yeah. Most vocal tics will be repeating words or kind of clearing your throat. Um, and there's also something called coprophilia, which is like a disgusting thing, and I kept getting those words confused. Coprophilia. Yeah, it's Cop- to do like, with like. Feel. It's way worse than that. What do you mean? It's I think, I think it's when you have like a sexual thing about shit. Yeah, and they're, really? they're sim- really similar words. So I have to be really careful when I'm like, yeah, I've had, you know, oh, copilani in the past. No, that's just. Aha, uh-huh. so you've accidentally said to people that. that I've you, had that in the past. That you do have yeah. weird. Oh, have you got shit? that? Yeah, so you have to be quite careful with that's that one. Funny. Every day you learn some more. So what threats do you have? So I've got, you see, the facial tick, yeah, uh, the motors, a motor tick. A oh, motor tick. Motor tick, and then there's, then there's vocal tick. So I used to just kind of clear my throat or, which is way better oh, now yeah. in my 20s. Uh-huh. Uh, as like you kind of get older, they normally do level off quite well. Would you consider Tourette's to be one of your monsters? I would think so. I mean, it's more just the way I dealt with it. I felt a lot of shame about it and I really wanted it to go away. Whereas now I feel pretty all right about it. Okay, so, so it doesn't... what I want to do is I want to split this up because I, there is some kind of structure to this podcast, I think. <laughs> I'm not sure. But like I'll also do my best to... the structural piece of paper that was usually here for me, oh. let alone me and oh. you, isn't here. Oh, no. So I'm going to have to just try gone? and, I don't know, it's cool. I can kind of remember it. I've been, I've done about 24 mm-hmm. of these, so I should know. Um, so uh, firstly, I want to ask you how you're feeling today. I feel good today. Yeah, I've... I've... Out of 25? Twenty one and a half, I think. That's yeah, solid. I feel really, really good. That's like in his eighty percentile. Yeah, I had like a really rough time, maybe about two, three weeks ago, because I realised I hadn't been taking my meds properly, <laughs> and then I started taking my meds properly. And Which like, meds? Uh, so I'm on Lexapro, um, East Telepram, twenty milligrams. Is that, that. antidepressant? Antidepressant. Ah. It's an SSRI, I think. Those are really hard to come on and off. Yeah, re- and really bad. I was in like, you get physical withdrawals. You feel like <sighs> absolutely shit. I just wasn't being like with the ADHD. I wasn't. I forget to take them. I don't know if I've taken them. It could be like I'm four not days. Sure they help with ADHD, and I had not No, no. <laughs> they don't. But it just means that it's harder for me to remember in the first place. And you can't take ADHD medication as well as. Um, no, you well, can't. The, the, yeah, the doctor was like, yeah, there's um, all kinds of what is it called they interactions. Yeah. and I've had that in the past, not with they, ADHD they cross medication. Wires. And it's been an absolute disaster. So you've recovered from that? Yeah, I feel good now. Just really? like a few weeks of taking them properly and I feel fine. So you just missed a couple of... Yeah, it was really oh, stupid. Mate. And I was like, why do I feel it's so like bad? It's Jenga, isn't it? And I feel, yes, I feel good now. All right, great. So you've written a book called How to Come Alive Again. Yes. Um, a Guide to Killing Your Monsters. Hmm. Could you please... Um, oh, I'll put that there. It is be- it's beautiful, isn't it? It's a beautiful book. Mm. And uh, it is... Um, available. It is available to buy. It's in Waterstones, in Foils, um, a lot of like little local bookshops. Support local bookshops. Do you have it? I, I might ask on my Twitter, like if you if you stock it, tell me and I'll tell people, I'll funnel people in. Okay. Because people want to buy it. People are like, how do I buy it in the best possible way? So you've written this book. You have a book published at yeah. the age of 25. You're 26 now. 26 now. You were yeah. wrote it when 24. Yeah. 
Um, Maybe even 23. I think I started writing when I was... 23, I think it was 2017 I had that meeting, but I'd already written. And then boom, 20, that yeah. is a massive achievement. So can you please explain to me a little bit about how you begun to your relationship with writing, mm-hmm. what drove you to write the book and how the fuck you finished it? Yeah, it was, it's all been, it's all been good, but it's, yeah, it's hard work. So I, I where, did it, where did it start? So I have always, I'd written about like mental health since I left uni as like a job. Right. Um, but that was just articles, like a thousand words. Bam. For uni um, papers and then. I mean, this is after uni. At uni, Sorry, yeah, I was at doing. Uni, at uni, I was, you know, I liked writing a lot. I did English literature. Yeah. So I always loved writing, and that's always, I think. Why? It's just nice to do. It makes me feel good. But why? It's just I've never been a. I like being a creative person, but I've never been a performer. Right. I don't really be in front of people, and it doesn't kind of energize me. Whereas writing something, I think, well, that's really that feels finished. That feels good. Yeah energizes me it's kind of a real it gives you an energy yeah it's my that's my the idea of completion gives you energy yeah i love that i that's love kind of feel like i put those those words in the right order what if you don't like the order well then you start again or you you know you do your best and that comes naturally to it's you. better to write something even if it's total shit than to write nothing it really is that's yeah. hard though for some yeah. people but you i know. liked it so i always like writing that's great so you have a general, you have like a, ne- a natural ability to redraft and complete yeah i like i love that i love kind of messing around with words and Seeing and putting them in, yeah, feel. just being like this. Sat, this feels right. I like that. Um, so I was always writing, you know, papers, and st- I did a lot of creative writing at uni, little stories. which was good. So I did a lot of short stories. Um, I did my my dissertation was like a six thousand word story, which really? feels like a like I was cheating, but I was like I'm definitely doing that. That's brilliant. Rather than like a proper. Was it a sci-fi? It was like, yeah, kind of future. Don't lie. It was. Is it? Yeah, it was kind of like set in the future and like it's this lesbian couple and it oh, was someone's, you know, it's totally like the mob was there. I don't remember it. The exactly. mob was there. Yeah, some kind oh of God, like. This sounds like a future. Future desert mob. This is at least yeah. a Netflix series. Um, and I really enjoyed that. Um, but, it, you know, someone had to come and say, do you want to write a book? For me to be like, maybe I could write a book. So why did they come and say that to you? Well, because I was, this is like, I'd been writing for maybe two years and, and my work was out there and I was tweeting to an audience of maybe like 50,000 people. 50,000? 50, that, I think, yeah, by the time the book came out, it was about 50,000. How did you get to that? So now it's about 100,000. How? Just tweet, like tweeting, people were like, this is quite funny. Just or, off Twitter? Yeah, the whole you thing, just... the whole, this book would not, it was Twitter. Oh, Twitter just, got me my work, it got tweets. this. I was killing those tweets. 140, 140 word murder. That was it, yeah. And now it's 280. But at the time, when I like, was coming up on Twitter, it was 140. And was people it, were like, okay, we'd take a chance that you can write an article. Was it like, what kind of vibe? Like opinionated? Mostly very it was jokes. Honest. So I was, a, jokes. I was just writing jokes, really silly jokes. And, and to, like, I think when I was left uni, I had about 10,000 followers. And it was really it was nice. It was a nice community. And it was just jokes. It was also like jokes about being a woman and jokes about being mental ill as well. Like uh-huh. a lot were like, funny takes on the fact that I was depressed and anxious. Ah. So that's where, when people are like, oh, maybe you want to write. About this. Write about, you know, having depression and having anxiety. The power and it, of And they Twitter. fed each other. So I'd get more work from the article. Did you get like Twitter co-signs from like authors and stuff? Yeah, some like, a few of like, a few famous authors have blocked me, which is quite, like Joyce Blo- Carol Oates has blocked me on. Blocked you? Blocked me. But then you get like, you, you talk <laughs> as a really. Why? I don't remember. So I'm what, definitely pissed her off, but you do, you like people, you're kind of more visible to like people uh, that you, hilarious. like P- me and Piers Morgan have like a running. Oh, fuck Piers Morgan. Like, like, uh, what, not like I invited him, there was like an MTV show that was like, meet your online rivals. And I was like, come on then Piers Morgan. He was like, I'm ready when you are. Uh, you replied, great. Yeah, I so, mean, <clears throat> I've had a lot of back and forth with Piers Morgan. He's an awful man, but yeah. yeah, so that's what I do online. And that was like the real kind of catalyst for getting getting jobs and then the jobs, I had a few meetings at publishers and then Unbound got in touch and immediately just felt really good about it. Mm. Like Unbound, I love Unbound. Like I'd read a few of their books. Like I had like, um, what is it? The Good Immigrant, which I thought was amazing. And they, they've done so many great books. And I was just like, yes, if you want to do a book with me, I will absolutely. Right. Wow. That's great. So what, So was this, was this idea something that you were like, right, I'm ready to write this? Or did you have to sit down with yourself and think... Were you particularly struggling at the point of contact? I mean, possibly. Uh, at this point, like I had, when I went to Unbound, like I had this document that I'd started writing, which was, I mean, the bones of this book. And I, at the time, I didn't think of it as a book. I was like, oh, this is a really long, like, blog post. Yeah. Um, and it wasn't, you know, I kept building and building and it was like, you know, 40,000 words. I was like, oh, this might actually be a book. And I sent it over to them and they were like, yeah, you structure a book around this. This is, you know, this will work because it's such short 
paragraphs and we we reordered them and we did this this and this and then added to it and it was already there like i'd i'd like accidentally written most of the book without mm. i'd like trick myself it's pretty amazing did you ever feel like did you ever battle with like imposter syndrome oh yeah like i always Completely. feel like how would i know all the time and like i luckily i had a lot of people to talk to where i could be like you know bounce my ideas off but once I decided to do the book, it was kind of out of my hands. I was like, well, I've got to do it now. I've signed a contract. Uh -huh. But before that, if I'd just been, if I was someone like, finish the book oh, and then yeah, we'll see. Oh, there's it. no way I would have finished the book. Really? No, I had to have that, that structure of someone saying, right, we want this by March. We want this. And so you just kind of do the work. Yeah. Which is good. I need that. I need that deadline. So how long did it take you? Um, I reckon it probably took a year. And then edits. Words. Love that. Yeah. Because well I could done. sit there and write... Some days I'd write 2,000 words. I gave myself a minimum of like 500 a day. And you never screwed with that? No. And I wasn't doing a lot of other writing at the time though. Like yeah, I've but you never had... write 2,000 and think, oh, I'm just gonna chill for a couple of days. Mm, I quite liked it. It was like, it is fun, and it was it? like at the time I was to working- To have a goal, have purpose. Yeah, I was working in a shop and then I was working as a nanny. Which shop? Um, oh, it was just a little card and gift shop back in. Which do you prefer, Ken. the shop or the nanny? The nannying, like, really? oh, I like the nanny. Are you saying that because she might be listening, the mum? No shit, no, they won't. But it was, it's nice. Yeah, I no, think they kids definitely won't be listening. <laughs> cut all ties. No, they, I like that. Yeah, it's nice to to kind of be busy. And in the shop, I was just in this room, like doing laps. Cards and Cards and gifts. So like. But good pens. I mean, there, it wasn't really a lot of stationery. Really? It was it's kind of like cards. expensive gifts, like jewellery and like soaps that cost like £45. Oh, fantastic. And it was like yummy mummies would come in. Oh, so you and, worked in West Hampstead? I did not, but I think they, yeah. All right, so how, what was, would you say was, has been your most difficult period of mental well-being in your life? I think at, at university, definitely. Really? That was when I could not, I couldn't pretend anymore that it wasn't happening, which I'd been doing really successfully until I, I was at uni, I was about 18, 19. Um, I had to confront it. Um, and it was, it, I think I went to the doctor because my mood was really, really low. I've been drinking a lot. First time was, term was great. And then suddenly it gets a bit real. You're living away from home. First time like freshers. Woo! Freshers, fantastic. And then you, you know, you come back in the new year and you think, oh, I'm here and for the next few uni, years. So. It, I mean, it was- I feel like I missed out. I mean, I, I, I have, have a lot of regrets uni, like associated. Yeah, so I, I met, I was lucky I met some great people, but I mean, for the third year, I spent most of the time in bed. Like I'm, I would miss like five weeks of uni at a time. Whoa. Like I, I missed out on like the first class degree just because I was too ill to like hand in my essays. Oh, Which, so it sucks. So there's a lot of like regret, but also it was a time of real like reckoning. You know, it was the first time I went to the doctor and said, I am, I think I'm really depressed. Yeah. And well, like depressed, like suicidal. I, d I reckon or at that depressed, time like, I was just- depressed like how do I feel happy ever again? Yeah, it was that real, it was that period, it was like melancholy, four weeks in, yeah, when you're just like walking around and you just feel like everything's so far away from Apathy. you. Oh, like disassociation. Yeah, thing. I was, I felt like, you know, I was in this like spaceman suit and nothing was coming <gasps> close and like That's everything was sort that of- you say that as an image, I've heard that before. Yeah, it's really like there's a, you're walking around in like a human body, but nothing is, all, it's like all the colors drained out of everything. And so I went to the doctor and I was like, all right, something is not right here. Yeah. Um, and that was the beginning of obviously seeing a lot of doctors. And before that I was like, I was in real, I was doing a good job of being in denial and learning all of these like really bad habits to, you know, present as a mentally well person, which I'm now unlearning like right, eight of years course. later. Yeah. A, you know, I was thinking about, I was trying to write something about this today actually. Mm -hmm. And I was thinking about when I was a kid, my, um, whenever my mum would ask me to tidy my room, I would just shove all my clothes into little crevices. Yeah. yeah. So then when some when the, someone would look, it looked like it was tidy. Exactly. And then I realised that that's probably an analogy for yeah. like a lot of my life. Because the minute you put any pressure on it, think it, there's it, yeah. nothing exposed <laughs> yeah. the mess. It's like, I would never be able to find anything. That is, I think that's perfect, I you know. Can, but then of course, the the painstaking folding of things, it's, it's looking after your future self, isn't it's, it? It's, yeah, storage solutions that make sense, <sighs> but mentally. Self storage. Self storage, yes, which you have to do over, and like that's like, I feel like it's my hobby now. Like yeah. I've got to learn how to be a person. Store myself. Oh, I quite like that. Which I, I see, like I see that kind that's of quite profound what image. I do, but like, it's like, oh, I'd rather be like, not have that and be like, doing like Zumba or like ceramics, why but I spend most of my Zimba? time like trying to figure out my brain. You can do Zumba as well. I think you probably, I think Zumba probably be quite good. I feel for like me, you've, you, I feel like you can remove that block. Yeah, do Zumba. Is there Zumba better. nearby? I feel like Zimba wherever you go. I think you can do Zimba. Yeah. 
whenever you want. It takes a lot of effort, though, to be like a person. That I feel a bit tired for Zumba. Yeah. Oh, you're too tired to do Zumba? Yeah. I think Zumba's one of those things, if, if we keep saying Zumba enough, you'll be able to do it. Do you think that's... <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that is Zumba. Maybe Zumba's in the heart. Okay, so Zumba's in the heart. Uh, so is there a root to all this? I mean, if you don't want to talk, speak about anything... Oh, my issues. Totally cool. My brain. I mean, I think No, just it... in terms of, like, often they talk about anxiety and depression or whatever mm-hmm. else being a, a, an attempt to stop you from feeling something else. Mm-hmm. I mean, I don't know. What is that thing? Nothing happened. I don't think so. I mean, whenever I've gone to like a counsellor or a therapist, they always start in childhood and they're, I just think I'm a person who, I think I'm very like a very sensitive person, yeah. a person who will naturally pick up on- Other people's stuff. Yeah, little changes and that feeds their anxiety. Um, I mean, I, I'm understanding anxiety for the first time, not as like this internal battle of like my brain sabotaging me, but just as like a, like this kind of leftover from evolution of like my brain trying to alert me to, to perceive danger and yeah. and so I'm like oh I am on my own side but I'm just kind of getting a bit wrong. That's interesting. Um, and so I, which is quite helpful to understand like the processes of of depression and anxiety. But I don't think so. I mean, I'm sure there's there's all kinds of things that have fed into it and made it better or worse as I've been growing up. But but you seem to re- but you seem to remember having like a fun time primary and secondary school. Whatever, like. Yeah, I think there's always. I was always maybe, yeah, a little bit anxious as a kid, but it's too early to, like, you know, pathologise. You can't expect, you know, my parents were like, oh, she's a bit shy, or she's, you know, it's only as an adult that kind of blossoms into something that... that Do you have brothers and sisters? Yeah, I've got two brothers and a sister. We're all, there's four of us, and my parents had four kids in four years. Whoa. Idiots. Yeah, Shaggers. Yes, yeah, wouldn't idiots. stop. Just absolutely couldn't stop. Um, I mean, were they all on purpose? I was the only one that was on purpose. Oh, really? Yeah. You then, would have thought after the second and... Well, they had twins to start with, and they not. were like, wow, these are... My brother and sister are so <laughs> easy and so, like, easy going. They were like, we'll have another one. 18 months <laughs> later, they had me, and they were like, okay. Because I was a little terrified. They were like, that's it, that's done. And then accidentally had another one. Oh, and then another... So, oh, so twins, right. Twins okay, me, well, I can kind of get it with it being three times. So there was four in four years. So all You're the middle close. child. So I'm the middle child, which I think... Is a thing? I don't, um, definitely is a thing, but... I've heard people talk about it. I'm an only child, which is definitely a thing. Yeah, oh yeah, oh, yeah that is a big one. Yeah. But I'm very generous. Oh, is that... You're not supposed to be. I don't know. Maybe. I don't know anything about... If you're an only child. I it's like... I'm like definitely have... I've had to battle through some quite severe social ineptitude. Yeah, okay. I didn't understand the concept of friendship until I was about 19. Yeah. <laughs> just from a... Pra- yeah. Just from a... Just from like an objective... <laughs> Like I get, I get it now. I'm like, oh, it feels nice to be around it's other people. Nice. Community is important. Yeah, but before it'd be like, if unless you're doing something that I, I, I felt as though actually propelled your life. Right. I didn't, I didn't understand that. I, I only now do I get the concept of doing nothing. When I was like a teenager, if someone was like, oh, we're, oh, what are you doing? Oh, we're gonna go hang around at Thingy's house. Yeah. Do like, nothing. What's the purpose? Of be like, that? are you watching a film? Like, if you're watching what's a film, what's the objective? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, literally, be like, how do I win? What's the end goal? <laughs> um, yes, for real. Okay, so what's your, what's been your most, what's been your best period of mental well-being? I think currently I'm in a pretty good state. Great. I mean, between now, between obviously there's like when I was a toddler before you get like, ob, you know, like object permanence and everything's all right. Right. This is probably the, wow. the most. Wow, I've never had anyone answer it with zero like, to six. Yeah, zero to six. <laughs> zero to nice. six months. I'm what was your best? Out. That's actually amazing. What's your yeah. best period of mental well-being? I think just after birth. Just after, yeah. Literally before my brain mm-hmm. even was Nap-nals. aware. And then you become self-aware, and that's and then it's just downhill. Downhill. And then now, yeah, I'm definitely feeling a lot better than I. I'm doing more work now when I. I have a bit more of a sense of myself and, and also I'm aware of how little I know and I feel all right about it. Oh, that's great. Like, I really, yeah, 26, no one has any clue. No one has anyone, any clue forever. I mean, I'm sure like, it, this is going to be hard until I'm in my 30s and then apparently everything gets a lot easier because you, you don't... I've heard things get better and better in, until you're in your 70s. Oh, sort of yeah. Six, or 60s and 70s. I've, I've literally heard people every decade say to someone the decade younger, go, oh, wait till we get into this one. Maybe, it's really... Yeah, maybe not in the age of like climate crisis, but we're going to ignore that and oh, pretend yeah. everything's going to get a lot better. I think, I think you do. You think you feel happier and happier. I can't even worried. fathom the climate crisis. Me I'm neither. I, I want it to stop. I'd rather it did. But I feel as though I have very little power. I mean, I do my... It's not like 
individual chains. Yeah, it's not. It's, it's got to be big boy big, country. Yeah, vibes. They're, they're putting out like yeah, like nine companies responsible for this. I can have my plastic. No, I get rid of my plastic straws. Yeah, and I can recycle. But do you know what I think is interesting about that? You know, when people say there's no planet B. Yeah. I thought, what if there was a planet B? We'd it's, wreck that as well. It'd still we? be awful. We'd well, how would you get there? <laughs> exactly. I was thinking about it the other day. I was like, what does that mean? And also, how would we decide who gets to go to planet B? It would be very. That would be a real quick mm. way of causing mass murder. Yeah, I wouldn't definitely wouldn't be the able to The rich people would be hunted down. Because I don't... Well, they would, because they've got no real skill set, though. I know, but also they'd be, have the most likelihood of... Well, that because climate change is very racist, like... Elon Musk would have to wear constant yes. armour. Always. I wish he would. I don't like that man either. I don't know why he's not a vigil vigilante like Batman. I don't know. If I was that yeah. smart and that rich, I would literally be fighting crime. What does he do? He just tweets. He tweets. He's like a 47-year-old man who tweets like a teenager. Yeah, but I mean, it's fair enough. I'm I always think, asking I for money and he never has, he's never given me any, so. Well, he invented PayPal, you know. I think he said PayPal then. And I was, I use PayPal all the time. PayPal. PayPal. Yeah. yeah. And that's why he's so rich. Oh my God. Yeah, I but also wondering. he's a genius. Yeah, he's a genius. He should probably have to billions, someone... but he should, you know. Well, it's like probably Twitter is just like, I think the idea of, when you have that much power, like social interaction must be like the biggest drug of the world. Well, sure, because everyone wants to be your your friend. So you're just saying things. Saying things I actually things don't follow him on Twitter. No, me neither. Don't you? No, I don't follow many like real people, real celebrities. Like, you follow robots? I follow mostly bots. Oh, yeah, right. Russian bots. So that's everyone then? Ex Am exactly. Am I right? Consumerism. Um, no, I, try, I don't really follow a lot of celebrities. Okay. Who's your favorite person to follow? Um, I've got a lot, I follow a lot of people who, there's like a account that posts like, I think it's pictures of raccoons every day. Really? I think it's called like Everyday Raccoon. So I quite like that because it's really no nonsense. You know exactly what you're going to get. Would you say that's contributing to your mental well-being? Yes, absolutely. So much more than anything else I do. I love that. Yeah. So if anyone wants to just have a little a buzz in a day, just make sure you subscribe to and Everyday I, Raccoon. And I recommend that people follow these accounts because they are really nice. Really? They do make you feel better. They're really uncomplicated. Yeah. I think it's called Everyday Raccoon. I mean, there's one for possums. There's one for... You know, little pigs and wellies. There's all kind like you can <laughs> you can choose your poison on that. You don't have to have raccoons if you don't if you're not partial to them. Yeah, yeah. great. Think I'm in love with a singer. Yeah, but I wanna get richer. Life threw me a bag of lemons. No wonder I'm bitter. Have we done many interviews about this before? I mean, I've done a, I've done a few. I've done like a few in real life panel things. Uh -huh. um, and then a couple on the. On because the... what I what I like about these these podcasts is you have an opportunity now for your fan for your fan base people who follow you on your to know a bit more about you yeah the it's parts nice. of you that you wouldn't necessarily want. you know what another thing we do with with the whole truth podcast is we talk about music oh fantastic yeah so because you know music how's that how what's your relationship been with music and mental health like are there particular songs so I, lo I mean, I love music. I album. kind of, I think that's an important one. But is there anything you can or can't listen to anymore? Mm, I mean, there's, a, I mean, just a few songs. I think that you just attach relationships in that. Yeah, but mostly, no, there's nothing. Um, and I know that there's a lot of like kind of music therapies that people do, and I just love, I love music. Like What's I, your go-to to to build to boost your spirit? Oh, that's an interesting question. I think Toto. Toto is like just not Africa, not just like maybe some like deeper catalogue Toto. What, that's what's the one something about raining like, in Africa. Oh, oh yeah, um, yeah, not Toto. that one. Toto, yeah, forget that one. There's Hold the Line, which I like a lot. I'm Rosanna. Not, I don't know. Toto kind of pumps me up. Really? I like Mitski a lot, but that's more of like a melancholy. Melancholy's fine. Like like on the bus when it's raining, looking out the window. Really? And you just catch a vibe? Yeah. Like I love music, but I mean like I've got no sense of like rhythm or I don't, I'm not a singer, I'm not a, but I just love listening to music. You don't like dancing? I love dancing. I'm not very good at it, though. That yeah, doesn't matter. You don't have to be good at dancing. Yeah. Really? Mm. There's two questions as well that I ask on a podcast which are, are pretty pointless, but they can sometimes lead to quite interesting okay. conclusions. What's your favourite colour? Go. Um, a kind of mustard yellow. Love that. Mm. That's a great colour. I love mustard as well. As a, as a food? As a food. Like, just like, when I was little, me and my sister would go and get a little, little spoon of mustard. A little just Dijon. Mm. When you were little? Yeah. And we still do it now. You had an acquired taste for mustard pre-10. Yeah, mustard and, and vinegar. That's wild. Yeah. Not you know when you said before, you said nothing really happened to you as a child and then... No. <laughs> Eating mustard <laughs> and I reckon, drinking vinegar. Yeah. That might have had something to do with it. <laughs> 
Oh, when did you roughly start disassociating <laughs> as a child? Well, me and my little, me and my sisters used to take yeah. spoonfuls of mustard. Wake up just absolutely covered in. I'm sure you have to wait for your palate to like settle. Like, are we like it? I know what. I'm being ridiculous. You're mm. right. Mustard is fine for and all And I ages. just love that. I love that color. I think it's quite. It's a happy color, but it's not. It's, it's not, not smug too, about it's not it. Too it's intense. not kind of like. It's can, almost Saharan. Yellow. Yeah. It's, it's like almost golden sun. Classy, I think. But it's a bit more. Mm. Also, you can get away with it in like a suit, t-shirt. That's it. It is a great colour. Yeah. My, my favourite. Um, that's brilliant. Um, and what's your favourite shape? Circle. Yes, Dan. That's Circle. The... I like them. I think it's sure. an uncomplicated shape. Again, I think they just kind of roll around, don't get involved. Kind of, it just seems like they don't, yeah, don't get involved with the drama. Yeah. A circle. Great. Yeah. Big fan. Like a circular table. No one's at the head. Do you like a circular table? I do if there's like a Lazy Susan type, like... And there's food going around it. That's I quite like that. A lazy Susan. Lazy Susan. I really want a lazy Susan. What's a lazy Susan? It's like a thing that spins. I think you can get like a manual or automatic, just like so the food goes round. Lazy Susan. Like yo sushi. I mean, I think that's kind of the lazy Susan of the future. Who has a yo? Who has a yo Susan? Who has a lazy? <laughs> Susan. Who has a lazy Susan in their house? I mean. Probably really rich people. I don't have one yet. Oh, okay, cool. So you you just want something that spins and people so just people take their bits have, off. Yeah, you get in the restaurants. I love that. That's I think wild. that's a great shape. You can't have that with. Is too many sharp corners involved with any other shape? Is it is it el literally electric powered? I d I think you probably can get those, but I quite like a humble one that you have to rotate yourself. Do you ever feel uh, conscious about talking about? I mean, you've written a book about it. Mm whole book yeah it's no going back You're not now. that are you gonna do you feel the conversation around mental health has has, has changed since you started writing it do you feel as though there's more of yourself to be dug up and mm -hmm. thrown out maybe i mean i've always tweeted about it i've always oh, been yeah, really so. really honest about it like i'll be like i'm having a bad day i don't want to get out of bed today or like i didn't get out of bed or, or all of these things like i've always been really open about that um and the internet is forever so you know that was always out there and so when it came to writing the book it, not a lot of it i haven't talked about like it's not super autobiographical like I do there's a few things in there about like I was like there's your stories that you know my parents knew but like people are like oh I didn't know that this had happened uh -huh. um, but yeah definitely I think people are more people will come to me and and, and say oh, I read people I went to school with like oh I read your book and and I didn't know this but oh, I've also been through this which is really nice people are really the relatability it. yeah I think people like I think people like when people are frank about these things it's yeah. important it is, I think. I think honesty, living in your truth is a real, only real way to connect. Yeah, and I know that people do. There's, I love the push towards like, oh, just talk about it. And but do you feel the pressure now you've read, read, written this? A little to be, bit. To be constantly. Yeah, a little bit. People always, people are like, oh, what, you know, what, what, what's new? Or like, what's going on? Or like, are you feeling depressed? And I feel like that always centers the conversation. Great, like how next I'm book. Men mental, yeah. Um, <laughs> but I like it. I mean, it's, it just means I'm super comfortable asking other people about theirs. Like when I meet people and they're not mentally ill, I'm a bit like, what? That doesn't exist, does it? No, I can't, it can't do. And people are like, no, I don't have anything. I'm like, we definitely do. I think there are some people who might have had a very emotionally bound childhood. Yeah. With reasonably secure parents. That is it. That I mean, might feel uh, okay. A lot of people are really like, Kind of neurotypical and also really have, have got the skills that they need to manage their emotions, which is great. Happy yeah, but normal, I think, is so subjective, you know. Absolutely. So, are there things you do? The is there things you do day to day to manage yourself? What are they? So, for me, routine's a big one um, because yeah. I can very quickly slip into something, and like I won't notice that I've not been eating properly. Oh, I've I've kind of not. So I go to the gym or I go for a walk and I try and that's the best do things. Movement. Yeah, it's uh, that is the. the I mean, e even in conjunction with antidepressants, they say that it makes them work like 10% better 100%. just exercising. So that's the thing I really enjoy. Like I've reframed that as like, it used to be like, oh, I've got to go to the gym. That's a chore. And now I'm like, no, I like going to the gym. It's the thing that I do for myself. Yeah. Which is not, like I don't do to lose weight or, yeah, or like, because yeah, I want to be nice stronger. Time. It's just nice to go. Yeah. So that's important. I think routine, taking my meds on time. At the same time? Yeah, I try to. Try to, yeah. But so I just can't manage it. 
because I don't have that like executive function where I'm like yeah that's what ADHD is yeah you lack, complete lack of that and I've got a like I've tried alarms I've tried like putting post-its everywhere saying have you taken yeah, the executive functioning part of your brain as someone said it to me the first time I was like this sounds ah, like mad, instantly my head became a boardroom yes and I was like someone's not doing their job <laughs> all of it is chaos in there there's paper everywhere yeah and it's like why are you not working better you know yes. how do you motivate our executive functioner because it's, it's weird you say like I get like hyper focus people like people with ADHD can't focus and often it's that they can focus really if well on interested. stuff that they're interested in yeah. whereas and now so now i really have to engage i'm that. not interested in anything uh, it's a problem <laughs> <laughs> I, <laughs> that'll um, get you i'm joking <laughs> there are some things but it's also yeah saying i you've got to do what you've got to do like you've got to go to work but also routine is important it saves me from the from the from the what's the word clasps Saves me. It saved me from the clasp of the grasp. The clasp. Clasp. The clasp. Clasp is like when word. you fasten things. Yeah. Yeah. Like you could clasp something. It saves like me this. from the clasps. Clasp of depression. Yes. Yeah. Routine. I got a dog as well. And oh, that helps with the walking. That helps massively. No, but it's walking. Oh yeah, because you've got to get the out. Walking thing. I love walking. So routine is routine. What it's keeps a big one. You, you know, I'm quite flexible with it because I know some days I can do less and I will do less. Like I've always got permission. I'm like, look, you can, if you want to stay in bed, say so you could stay in bed for the day, but you're not doing it two days in a row. And it, I oh, kind of get so to me so you up. set yourself the boundary. Yeah, I'm like, look, That's if important. you want to, you can have an hour to wallow. But after that, you're getting up and you're, even on days when I don't feel like it, I can still do stuff. I don't Discipline. have to love it. I can, I just got to do it. Discipline somewhere. I don't have a lot of it, but yeah. what I do have, I really. What do you want to get ticked off in the next 10 years? I mean, you've already written a book. Yeah, I mean. What's the dream? I reckon at some point I'd like to have some savings. People are like, oh, I want to buy a house. I would but like to have London, some right? savings. Exactly. Doesn't, that's not a thing. <laughs> they can't some, exist. Yeah. So it's, it's mostly, I mean, career-wise, I'd like to... You can do it. ...to gradually build these. I'd like to be doing more, you know, I'd like to be maybe write another book, maybe write a fiction book. You know, 10 years' time, I, I'll have a bit more life behind me so I can maybe write another non-fiction. Yeah. Because this, I feel like I'd, I could only write at this point because it was... You forget what it's like to be a really young person with... The guy, I feel like I wrote this back in time to my 16 year old self yeah. and at 35 I'd have forgotten her I would have forgotten exactly I wouldn't have known like how to talk to her so that this one I wrote at the right time but next one I don't you don't know yet I might write one about dating because I do a lot of that and I'm like I'm not very good at it but really? also do it like I feel like I could why are you not very good at it I'm, I'm, just, I'm not very good at it I just I think I do a lot of it and I've got very little patience for nonsense have you ever had your heart broken oh yeah it hurts right it hurts so bad <laughs> that's something that like that's something that i think is an interesting co topic of conversation yeah. it actually was once it did pop up once on this podcast and i was really wanting to get more into that mm. because relationships are a massive aspect of our yeah. well-being because a big bit in the book that i wrote like dating when you're dating with a mental illness i think it's mm. so you navigate that so much so much differently you know depending on what I think you metabolize pain when you're someone with depression or anxiety or any of these things you metabolize pain in a way that's really draws it out and and I found myself being really like really hard on myself being like well this is because of this because of the unique you challenges you metabolize pain yeah just the way that I kind of dealt with it was just how do you mean you metabolize it like just the way my brain and my body processed it it felt like it went through me like very very I didn't deal with it very very well okay it went straight through you or it gets stuck it get kind of stuck I feel like you kind of take a long time over with that like, very sensitive have you ever people. Have, have you had like one particular relationship? I mean, I think that like centerpiece, you know. Bigger break. Oh, yeah. From like my longest relationship was 18 months. And when we broke up, it was he was mentally ill, I was mentally ill. It was in a really like really bad, torturous, punishing way. Oh, so it was like toxic the whole way through. I mean, no, the relationship was great, but just the breakup and that last oh, kind of few no. months were the worst. It was bad. And, and I, we were like kind of living together. But and you know having to move out and having yeah. to it was bad. That's but it's lot. so it's I mean it's it does teach you a lot. It's so informative. Annoyingly, you do learn. And how do you so? You since that point, it's a long relationship, eighteen months. Eighteen months. Yeah, I, I mean I I kind of love love and I think it's great. But I I pretty happy on my own. I'm pretty happy to I like dating a lot. You I like yeah. I do that. So you know I think you you learn how to be in a relationship and learn how to better attach yourself to people and like healthy attachments versus unhealthy attachments. Yeah. And I think you do a lot of that in therapy as well. Like a therapist explains this to me and I'm like, oh. Uh -huh. Oh, I didn't know that. But I feel like all of this falls into the same, I think that also falls into the reasons as to why we end up being held back or or why we have struggles with, like for example, 
I didn't necessarily have like any particularly big moments of like, boof, this happened in your childhood. Like, yeah. you know, like I didn't have like a major operation or something like that. But I was just brought up in a p- environment that can just cultivate particular, like there's this, there's this, there's this one guy called Gabo Mate, do you mm-hmm. know about him? Who, who works with child, who I've mentioned, I've mentioned his name loads, but yeah. he's like a child psychologist and mm-hmm. he and he talks about trauma, but like trauma isn't necessarily recognized apparently in a lot of spaces. And he says that ADHD, you're not born with ADHD, you're born with a propensity to get it. And then, and then if you're put into a particular environment, it goes like boom. Oh, and then like, like and then when it moves, and then in the rest of my life, if I think about situations that have like, caused me anxiety at a young age it, you know it's just yeah. you find those situations again and then you're having to detach you're having to like separate the two things from happening yeah which yeah, yeah. is why your body goes into some kind of like old response it's, it's wild isn't it i mean I but often it happens in a context of love because like yes. there that's the reminder of it activates of when, that you're a, when you're a kid part of yourself yeah there's all these like tests that they do about like attachment in children and where we get these things from which i found so fascinating like they do it with monkeys as well Okay, hey, let Which me do it. Let me do. Let me do a game with you. Okay, go on then. All right, yes, you real quick. Okay. What's your favorite animal? A monkey. Oh, fuck. okay. Give three. Why three things? Because they're funny, yeah. quite human, and I think they're just from cartoons. Do a different third one. Oh, um, funny. What did I say? Funny. Quite, like quite humans. Um, they've got long arms. Long. Arms. Quite like a long-armed creature. Okay. Uh, so, so I break the game. <laughs> no, so uh, the, apparently, if you ask someone their favorite animal and their favorite three things, that's just like secretly what they look for in a partner. Oh God, <laughs> human-like long arms. I love that you said quite funny. human. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's like brilliant. <laughs> yeah, I mean that is. I mean, you're not wrong. Yeah, those things are. Boom. True. I asked my mum that once, and she went a giraffe. <laughs> and oh. I went why, and she went because they're so unusual and rare. And I was like, I was like, this is why you're single. <laughs> Yeah, big, big long neck, eat yeah. leaves. Literally, it's like so wild and just like, oh, it's so bizarre. It's like, I'm going to be thinking about that. I'm going to be... Just like rain it in a bitch. I mean, go for like a... I'm going to ask you that question, but yeah, that's quite scary. But no. Yeah, I said fox. Hmm. Yeah. What were your reasons? Independent. Fishy tail, eats garbage. <laughs> Low maintenance. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Like, uh, yeah, eats, yeah, eats crap. Eats crap. Yeah, only see him at night. Amazing. Nah, there's, like, there's genuine reasons, you know. Something. I've always felt w- quite a, quite a resonance with foxes. I like I like yeah when urban foxes. I cried the other day when I saw an injured fox. Oh, no. And I don't was cry about life, loads of human things, the... man. No, in real life. What was wrong with it? Oh, it's, it was fucked up. Oh, Apparently, really it's bad, like yeah. it's is, it is a change of season, so like there's lo- lo- loads of like pack stuff. Like some foxes get beaten up and then left for dead. Basically, oh, nature is so brutal. Like I saw a fox sleeping the other day. It was lovely. My brother was like, look, and we looked in a hedge and he was in there and I was like that's just lovely but it's nature yeah that fox could get hit by a car he was dead no he, de- no, he was alive he was sleeping if it's in a day man honestly there's more more often than not that, that fox is fucked <laughs> oh, I thought it was quite cute but that's was, what uh... I thought and then I saw that it was fucked oh, no. I, said, I suppose the woman at RSPC she was like yeah like n- like nine times oh. out of ten if you see a fox in a day that dude has screwed it that is bad bad yeah it's bad not time. it's not it's not ideal I'm at deeply all deeply upset about that oh well um you fancy foxes? I like a man who's. I wouldn't have human. fancy foxes. As you've jumped there quite a lot. Yeah. I, I I've got do. a bit Freudian there, but. Really, my mm. mum's not a fox, so no. it's not that oh, Freudian. Thank God. Thank God. Um, but I mean, maybe one of your parents is a monkey. I hope not. Maybe like way back, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's all started off. We all we all started off as monkeys, didn't we? So technically, you are just attracted to humans. Exactly. Brilliant. Um, <laughs> I feel like I've run out of questions, but I, I I'm sure there's yeah, other I, stuff. What Maybe I want to ask you the questions. Uh, nah, uh, people know. Are you an investigative journalist? No. And you're trying to get secrets out. I think of me. I'm too lazy. I think because I my articles that I write aren't they're just feelings and opinions. Advice. Yeah, advice. Is exactly. your advice fluid? Have you contradicted yourself much? Oh, you think I have? Most of the time, I just encourage people to ask questions of themselves, and I say, look, this is what I would do. This is what I think you need to do. But ask yourself this series of questions and see where you end up. Yeah. Rather than being like you should. Because I get a lot of questions like, should I leave my husband? And I'm like, I'm 26, so I absolutely cannot be trusted with That's this. a deep question. So I just don't answer. I'm like, maybe. Imagine I don't want to ruin someone's life. Said yes. So mostly I just answer questions from people younger than me. And it's like, oh, why is my boyfriend being like this? I'm like, he's an asshole. Oh, really? No, yeah, it's stuff that I'm like, I know I've been That through. doesn't sound that empathic. He's an asshole, but maybe not nice asshole. No, I know no, you're I, uh, Yeah, yeah. So it is. Sometimes yeah, you've just got to be like, boom, right? Hmm. Sometimes you have to be quite hard on people. Yeah, I get that. Tough love, but loving tough love. Do you ever get guys writing and going, my girlfriend's been a nightmare? 
not a lot, which I, you know, I wish men would write in more because I think mm. men need, are in need of that empathy. I, you know, shared yeah. male experiences often not empathetic and not often gentle in a way that they need. It's true. More agony uncles, right? We need agony. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I mean, you could do that. Yeah. 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 You need like a fun name. It's like, dear. What do you mean? Mine's like Ask Teddy. Why Teddy? Um, te- I, my name on in the internet is Teddy. Back, like, I, which I chose. It was like a nickname, but I chose it back when like the internet was like more anonymous. MySpace. Yeah. MySpace, yeah. MySpace, Bebo, onwards. So now it's Teddy. So now it's Ask Teddy. Yeah. Teddy? Yeah, you need like a... But why Teddy? Well, I was going to be called Theodora when I was little, so I was going to be a Teddy, and I just it just seemed like something I could Theodore. pick quite... And a lot of people call me Teddy as a nickname, so I just... You have to pick something. You cool. have to have a... What's it called when you have like a stage name or something Pseudonym. like that? Pseudonym. Yeah, you have to Monica. have a... Moniker. Exactly. You have to have a moniker. Um, all right, well, is there any advice that you would give to anyone listening who has... Who maybe, yeah, just, you know, this is your opportunity to mm-hmm. communicate a little bit. I mean, I think the best advice for anyone, I think, is to remember that no feeling is final. That you're not, you know, you arrive at a place where you feel really terrible. You aren't going to be there forever. You can, you've got to consider things as temporary. And it gives you, I think, more scope and more of a ability to deal with it and, and, and push through it, knowing that it's not. It's not forever. None of it is. None of it is. None of it is. I mean... Nothing is forever. Nothing is forever. Everything dies. <laughs> Good night. Uh, but yeah, but just that, just that, you know, things, things, there's ways to change everything. I mean, I remember my mum used to be like, she'd be like, there's nothing so bad that it can't be fixed. And I'm sure there's holes in that argument, you know. But yeah. for a young, you know, I think that's it's a nice thing to think of. Like, nothing is ever that serious. You can... There are solutions. There are ways. Even if you can't see a way, I know. you of the future will Sometimes find a way. Sometimes it feels like you can't. Yeah, and the, the, just believe blindly in the in the kind of the power of your own, you know, actions and perseverance. Oh yeah. Oh, actually, before we finish this, if you had an hour in the day, a whole hour, to take care of your mental well-being, what would you do? I think I'd swim. Nice. I think I, I like if I live somewhere, I could go to the beach. I love the sea. I love the More coast. More than a swimming pool. More than a swimming pool, yeah. I think swimming in the sea or just being by the sea does such wonders for Dreamy. my... Or reading as well because I don't I don't make time for that enough. Yeah, neither do I. Like I listen to audiobooks because I can't... I struggle with concentration. Yeah. But it's different. What's the last book you listen to? Um, so I am re- listening to Dark Tower um, series by Stephen King. Yeah, the That's one they like, just brought out with Vidra Elba. And, yes. And show. Well, I haven't watched that yet, though. Yeah. Well, I, I mean, love the Dark Tower. Really? It's, it's like sci-fi and Western and horror. Brilliant. In like... Oh, it's Perfect. great. Perfect. Yeah. So I'm right. listening to that again. Well, thank you, Beth McCall. Thanks for having me. You're a ledge. Oh, cool. My last, yeah. Fist bump. Yeah. You can have a hug as well. Oh, right. Oh no, oh. <laughs> yeah, it's been great. Yeah, thank you for having me. Um, and you sure there's nothing I just want to say? No, I think so. A hundred percent. No, I, no, I've, I think you I've said it. You definitely don't want to say anything else. Mm, bye, book. Yeah. All right. Bye, book. Bye, books. Thank you.